Conservative peeps who are on the stream, this class is absolutely dedicated to you. Those of you who are talk about the liberal narrative, the liberal media, the liberal this, the liberal that, I'm going to be on your team today and we're going to talk all about the liberal narrative and the liberal media. <laughs> and what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about it in a way to sort of bring it to light for those of us who or those of you who identify as being more liberal and then you don't see it. You know, it's like the fish. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, just don't do this, dude. All right. So anyway, um, it's like the fish in water. When the, the fish is the last being or species to, to really understand water, right? Because you just grow up with water. Water is just a part of what, what life is. It's like us with air. If I told you you had to try to explain air to somebody, how would you explain air? The, what you would go to is you go to wind. But wind isn't really air. I mean, not air. That's not what I'm talking about. How do you explain it? So that's kind of how liberalism and conservatism is. If, you're, if you grow up with it and you're sort of steeped in it, you often don't see see it around you. And so I'm going to talk about the liberal narrative and the liberal media today and a way to show you the way it comes into play or in, in the world of race relations. So yesterday, I, I, we finished the class yesterday with this example of this guy. And, you know, one thing I didn't say, I mean, I want to say this, this guy later had to, to apologize for his comments about uh, about. Jesus being the, the, you know, the, the greatest hunter, right, uh, of Jews. So the, the, the idea is how do you convert Jews, right? Let me remind you, how you. The way you convert Jews to Christianity is you either fish for them, you show them the way, the truth, and the light, which would be Jesus, and like, you let them see Jesus' love on their own. Since they rejected Jesus in the past, now we're going to bring them into the you know, into that love of Christ. And if they don't, then you got to hunt them down. And it comes from, I don't know, Jeremiah or somewhere, right? Uh, somewhere in, that, in, the, in the Bible. And, but the issue is, and the greatest hunter of all was Adolf Hitler. And it's just like, wait, hang on a minute. What are you saying, right? What are we really talking about here? Are you implying that the way we should be converting Jews is like how Hitler converted Jews and so on and so forth. It's like, what are you really saying? And so when it comes out, he's really close to this guy and this guy doesn't, he, he says, yeah, I don't, I don't support those views and so on and so forth. But he still has a relationship with this guy and this guy still has his entire church and his religious foundation and he doesn't, get, he doesn't have to hide his face under a rock. He doesn't lose it all. He does not pull away. People aren't calling for his head. People aren't calling for him to resign. People aren't calling for him like, one thing after another, nor are they with this guy. Saying, look, you have, not only do you have to disavow this guy, but you have to call him the scum of the earth, and you have to never talk to him again, and you have to one thing after another after another. And if you don't do that, then you should resign from being a senator. Now, you think like, wow, that's pretty hardcore. Well, let me ask you what would happen if he had said, you know, the problem with black people is black Americans, they really need to get on board with embracing American culture. And, you know, you fish for them, you, you show it to them, you give it to them, and if they don't take it, then you force them. And if you don't force them, well, you know what happens? Well, we have nooses. We have other ways to address black people who won't get in line. Like, we have other ways to address Jewish people who won't get in line. We have other ways to address black people who won't get in line. How, how far do you think that guy's career would go if he started talking about nooses and black people and bringing black people into line? And how many black people in the United States and white people and everybody else would be absolutely up in arms if he said anything close to that about black people? And it shows when you think about this is the, the narrative. This is the way we think about race in the United States. Black people have a lot of power in many, many ways. And black people have less power in other ways. A lot of power, less power. And if you don't see that, and if you don't walk into that, and if you don't break it down, and if you're not willing to really deconstruct it all, then you're not willing to critically examine race relations. 
Because that's part of race relations. Because there's no way this guy would still have his job if he came anywhere close to saying something like that about black people in the United States. Because black people would demand his head in every way. And by his head, I mean they demand his resi resignation and that he'd lose it all. Okay? Now, some of you maybe aren't really fully believing me on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a few stories of how just fairly recently the liberal media, the liberal narrative has woven its way into U.S. race relations in ways that are really shocking even for somebody like myself when we decide to actually look at what's behind the story. So to help me with this first piece, I need probably, I need two black people from class who are like, who would consider yourself maybe the, the most radical people in class. Just like hard, right, hang on, radical left, uh, what do I mean? I need people who are pretty intransigent about racism. Really going to be quick to call out racism, going to be quick to say, listen man, I am intolerant of racism. I'm intolerant of all the stuff that smacks of racism. I just need, like, no, no, no. I need a couple people who are pretty hardcore about calling out racism when they see it. It's a couple of volunteers. It could be anybody. Anyone at all. I need, I need, I'll, I can get one volunteer. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to be super hardcore. You don't have to be, I don't, I'm not talking about dudes. Seriously? I'm not going to go back to you, Doug. Who? Can I get somebody? Who's pretty hardcore about racism? Oh, black people, you're all good? So if I tell a racist joke, you're going to be all right with it? If I drop the N-bomb, you're all cool? Can I just, like, drop the N-bomb real quick, and then I'll just see who says, like, oh, hang on, I got a problem with that? Like, what the fuck? Seriously. Can I, get, can I just get somebody to volunteer? Wait, are you African-American or African? Okay, good. Come on up. All right. Anybody, anybody, okay, you got one person. Anybody else want to just come up for the fun of it? Dude, whoever. All right, come on, man. Let's go. All right. You can have a, you want to sit up there? It's easier if you sit. Probably. You, can, you can sit on the table if you want, or do you want to sit on a chair? You're good? All right, man. Dude. All right, what's your name? Troy. Troy, what's yeah. your name? Patty. Patty. You can sit on the table. You can not sit on the table. But you're going to be here for a good hot, hot minute or so. <laughs> Pat, Patty Troy. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte. Charlotte? No. Right. How do you say it? <laughs> Charlotte. Charlotte? All right. Uh, I was born in Uganda, but I'm from Philly. You're from Philly. Okay, you're born in... When did you come here? When I was four. When you were four? Yeah. All right, that's good enough. All right, you're clear. You're sick. Do you, do you consider yourself African-American or African sometimes and African-American other times? Sometimes African, sometimes African-American. Yeah. Where in Uganda? In Kampala? Where? Entebbe. Entebbe? Yeah. Okay. Entebbe. Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. Oh, I have a question about, I have a question for you at some point. Okay. So listen. Check this out. Do you know this, do you know the story of this guy? Yes. yes. You know, you know what happened? Yes. What happened? Um, I don't really remember. I kind of left the news. What do you What do you know of what? Happened? I know I don't know the specific details, but I know that obviously what the headline says that the founder used the N word on a conference call. He and dropped the N bomb. Everybody like boycotted yeah. Papa John's pizza. What's that? Everybody boycotted Papa John's. People boycotted that. Papa yeah. John's and the whole nine yards. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what happened. I'm going to give you the best, so I've investigated this as best as I can, looking at it from a lot of different perspectives, and I'm going to walk you through what actually happened, okay? And then I, what, I'm, what I'm going to have you do is explain to me, hey, I'm going to need to be right here, by the way. I'm going to have you explain to me, I want you to, well, I'm going to have a bunch of questions for you about what you think. So what do you think about the fact he dropped the N-bomb and, and he was forced to resign? He's on a conference call. He's dropping the N-bomb. And they're like, dude, that's really uncool. First Sounds about all, right. a conference call is kind of like an awkward time. People have their justifications for using the N-word at certain times, but a conference call is just not a good time at all, regardless. Okay. 
Inappropriate setting, probably just inappropriate for him to use it all. It's a business conference call. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So here's what's up with this guy. So he's a businessman, okay? I mean, he started Papa John's Pizza, and like, he's a business guy, and there's franchises all over the U.S., all over the world, and make a lot of money, and there's a lot of money in pizza, I guess, because he makes a lot of money in the franchise, and everybody makes a lot of money. So when the NFL players were taking a knee, in 20, it really reached a peak in 2017 season, season before last, Papa John's is the official pizza sponsor of the NFL, and so he comes out at some point and he says, listen, NFL, you got to get your shit together. Because, like, come on, this is really cutting into our profits. This is, cutting, this is a problem for not only my company, but for lots of other companies. Now, in my company, by him, it's not just him. He doesn't make all the money. These are franchises and franchisees. So there are people who make a living off and send their children to college from and so on and so forth and pay their mortgages and their hospital bills and pay for the hospital bills of their children that are sick from the profits they make from their franchises from Papa John's. So this isn't just like him making a, having a bunch of stock and going like, NFL, you need to get your shit together because like, come on, I need to make more money because I only have five houses overseas and three corporate jets and I really want more. So he's saying, get it together. And people are saying, Come on, man. This is Black Lives Matter. Like, like come on. This is serious. And he's like, look, I get it. It's Black Lives Matter, NFL, but I'm running a business here. Can you deal with the players and work it out? Because I'm running a business. And like, work this out and it come to some kind of agreement with the players. Okay? Any, what do you study? Do you study business by chance? I'm a sociology major. Oh, my God. You poor soul. All right. <laughs> what do you study? BBH. BBA. Business majors. You got it, right? He has his obligation. Is it to the NFL players first or is it to his franchises and his operations and his stockholders first? Which one is it? Suddenly, like, oh, don't tell me like all the business people in the class get suddenly really liberal. It's to his franchisees, all the owners. It's to the stock owners, stockholders of Papa John's stock, and so on and so forth. That's where his first allegiance goes. It's great to have social issues, but that's what it is, right? Okay, so things go south. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention something. He also gave money to the Trump campaign. So immediately, what does that mean about him? He gave money to Trump. What's it mean? I mean, he supports semi-racist to racist comments if he's giving money to the Trump campaign. Okay, so he supports racism, so you expect him to say racist things. You don't expect him to say racist things out loud, maybe, in, in a conference call. But no, 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 I'm you, not saying you do, but yeah. like if, you ask, if I yeah. went around with a microphone, if I did a man or woman on the street interview and I said, hey, this guy gave money to the Trump campaign. It means he doesn't mind. Not Racism even, not. doesn't make him angry enough to not give money. Okay, he, got it. He tolerates it. Like, he doesn't see it as a problem. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Are we following here? So now, let's take it to the next step. And again, I don't know. I wasn't in the conference call. All I know is I'm just digging around for every little bit of information I get. And I'm going to give you, to the best of my ability, what actually happened here. Okay. So, first off... Um, he hires, the, the company hires this because things go south. He steps down as the CEO. And then they hire this PR company called the, La the Laundry Service, okay? And the Laundry Service is a New York City, Madison Avenue PR firm. And, you know, they come in and they're trying to fix things because, like, Papa John, John Schnatter, Shatter is his name. Um, John Schnatter. S-C-H-N-A-T-T-E-R. You actually have an image problem because people think you don't like black people and that you're racist. Because you support Trump and you're coming out against taking a knee. Why don't you just be quiet? And so we got to work on this image issue because that's what happens, right? You work on image. Right? I have my own PR person. Not really. Okay. They don't, if I did, they don't do a very good job. Right. <laughs> it's actually my wife. She spends her, half her waking hours trying to keep me from getting fired. Okay, so here we go. Um, so he's on the conference call with them, but in the, and then in the conference call, it comes out that he drops the N-bomb. As we see here, drops the N-bomb. So, a couple days later, 
he resigns as chair of Papa John's, the chair of the board. And then look at this. Papa John's CEO finally learned the lesson the media exercise was trying to teach. The media exercise was with the PR firm that racism is bad for business. He's clearly a racist. He's clearly a racist. Okay? Which makes it really easy to get because he gave money to the Trump campaign. He didn't even say he voted for Trump, but he gave money to the Trump campaign. It might be a little bit harder, but it's really easy with Trump. So let me walk you through what happened on the call. So these guys are saying, listen, John, uh, you got to get your image together. We're all in this big, it's a conference call, right? So you're just, just listening now. You got to get your image together. Like, what's up? He's like, look, I don't, I, I don't, I, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not understanding what the real issue is. And they're saying, and so he's like, yeah, I don't really understand what the issue is. And they're saying, well, we have an idea for you. Listen, what you're going to do is, we're going to, how about if we hire Kanye West as a spokesperson? This would be good. Kanye, because it's Kanye, you know, whatever. We'll hire, and John says, Schneider says, nah, man, I'm not hiring Kanye West because he drops the N-bomb in his lyrics. And I'm not, I don't support that. I'm not really into that. And they're like, well, what? yeah, but he would be a good spokesperson for you. He'd be really good. I don't care. He's dropping the M-bomb in his lyrics. That's not the image I want for Papa John's pizza. And he says, look, other people drop the M-bomb. So imagine, he's not talking to a room. He's talking to a microphone. Other people drop the M-bomb. Colonel Sanders regularly said N-bomb, okay? Regularly said M-bomb and nobody cared. That was Colonel Sanders. He regularly said it. Nobody cared. But I'm not dropping it. So he said the N-bomb. And he said the word. Colonel Sanders regularly used the word. Got it? Ready? The word. I'm not saying it. He said it in the conference call. Got it? He said it in the conference call. Cool? And they're saying, oh, well, hang on a second. Uh, I'm not really getting, like, this is a problem. Someone's like, I'm a little bit uncomfortable here. He's like, look, I get racism. Where I grew up in Indiana, when black people got out of line, people used to get there in their pickup trucks and go get black people and drag them around in the backs of their pickup trucks. I get racism. It's like, I don't support racism. I don't support trapping the M-bomb. I don't support any of that. And I'm not for that. And I'm not going that route. Cool? That's the call. Now it comes out, John Schnatter dropped the N-bomb. Now, I feel some kind of way about this. Because if I had said in this classroom... So this guy in his conference call said, hey, Colonel Sanders used to say, and I actually said it, I'd do the same thing that he did. That would be the same thing that he did. I'm responding to something else in the context of a call that's really valuable and important. Look, the most, probably the most well-known fast food giant and titan anywhere in the world is Colonel Sanders and he used to drop the M-bomb all the time and in the context of that conversation using the word isn't really that out of line just why? like what did, was, we were thinking the same thing why? He, why okay if he was using the acronym the entire time before why in that specific moment no he didn't use the acronym he just said it once that was when he said yeah, it yeah but then he why never why he he just said the, uh, colonel sanders said, said the n-word all the time because yeah. you understand that you're not supposed to say it that's why you didn't just say oh, it no, to no, his class no 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 hang so on you use the n-word so why would he feel why like it was comfortable to just say it in the moment that he could have said Colonel Sanders used the N word all the time and he never did blah blah blah. Why did he have Wait, to say on. Colonel Sanders says? Okay, so hang on. You ready? So you're telling me that this guy right here, because he's quoting somebody else in the context that makes a it's lot not a of research sense. Paper. You don't have to quote word for word. He could have just said 
Colonel okay, Sanders. so hang on. So you're telling me of all the things happening in the world related to black people and brown people and genocide and one thing after another after another, this guy, because he said one word in the context of quoting somebody else, should lose his entire, it's like, well, it makes sense. He loses his entire pizza empire. He has to step down as CEO. Well, he we weren't is talking about the entire human. context, though. We're talking specifically about the owner, the franchise manager for Papa John's, not talking about relating all of this to everything else. In that specific instance, if they feel like it was necessary, why well, I don't understand. If he could have said, there's a thousand, oh my gosh, so many other words in the English dictionary. And we that's know that there's an Colonel acronym. Sanders said, but that's not what Colonel Sanders said. Well, why did he have to say it? That's a cool, okay, listen. Sean brought up at one point, why do people feel like they ha want to say it so bad? Why does he want to say it so bad? Why listen, wouldn't he just say the N-word? Being devil's Here. advocate, though, I kind of feel bad for him. Like, if it was in that context, then maybe it was a bit extreme for him to lose his entire empire, but I still don't think he needed to necessarily say the full word in the context of the conversation. Okay, so let me ask you this. Take a look at that. John's, Papa John's founder yeah, used well, we the N-word in a We conference know that the media, the media does skew things just to create con controversy. So that, But had that not happened, he wouldn't have lost his job. Had they, had they come out in the media to say, hey, this guy was quoting Colonel Sanders dropping the M-bomb, and he dropped the M-bomb in the process of quoting, he wouldn't have lost his job. Even, nothing would have happened. It yeah. would have been like, oh, yeah, dude, yeah, I got it. Hey, by the way. You don't need to say that next time, but like seriously, what the fuck? I mean, come on, like you, you don't need to, but come on. Yeah. So then okay. It's the so fault you would go the there. Media. You'd be there on that. Yeah. yeah. So Halfway. this takes it to this is though the power that black people have to determine at some level this it's because it's a power of white people, the fear of white people, dude. Even me. Even me, who says the most outrageous things in the world, even here, even in the context of this conversation, I am not going to say that word because it could be the last day of my job. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Of all the things that I say, of all the things I could say, of all the things that are happening in the effing world, me just dropping that single word will be enough to say, Sam Richards, drop the N-bomb in class, fire that mf -er. Like, this is where we're at. <laughs> So this is the problem, right? This is the problem. And this is the power that somehow has emerged around in black people. You, what, what I think is that like a lot of, and look, I understand, remember, my, remember the conversation we had or the class we had on inequality, right? All the hidden inequality. So like you're, there's no one in this room that, I, because I study that, I, I get it more than anyone in the room. Like all the, the hidden ways in which the two of you are discriminated against in ways that you will never see. And certainly people with light skin will never see and never understand, but you'll never even see it. It's worse than what you would imagine, right? But this, like, fuck. So you don't have the power to stop discrimination. Got it? You don't have the power to stop that. But there's a power here over white people cowering in fear over like, whoa, fuck. Because if Papa John's gets hammered, like, for saying it like that? He's just quoting somebody? Like I think it's definitely different though when you're like a person, like Papa John's is a huge name. When you're a public figure and your name is out there, you are at greater risk. But if you're just an everyday person, you can do it and face okay, so what about consequence this? at all. So let's go back four years. We're doing the live stream. Um, somebody wrote something in on a, on a YouTube comment and they dropped the M-bomb. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so we put it up there and I read it because it was small type and people can read and I read it. And I said the word because I'm reading it. I'm like, come on, this is a race relations kind of some efforts, you know what I mean? Like, what am I going to do? And da 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 da, end bomb and go. And so I just like, yeah, whatever, I'm just reading it. If you find that video and we put it out in the world and Sam Richards dropped the end bomb, look, we have video to show that. And you got people calling for my head, saying you should, he should be fired. And what would you say? Four years ago, I read a tweet, not a tweet, but a comment on YouTube. And I, did, and I didn't skip over the word because I just thought that was hypocritical to do in a class like this. Like, come on, man. Y'all see it. I see it. Let's go. This is just stupid. Right? 
I think that sometimes things are, the consequences are extremely harsh because it wants to be uh, proven, it wants to be out there that it's no exception, zero tolerance is what I'm saying. Yeah, I so got you. that, I, I don't know if I'd agree with having your head or you losing your yeah. job, but the point of zero tolerance is because people still use it casually. They still say it whenever they want to. Yeah. And if you don't get a part, if you don't get to the point of zero tolerance, if you say, oh, okay, well then maybe that's okay sometimes. And other people will be like, eh, yeah, well, I know that my situation isn't the exact same, but I'm going to use it because yeah. I think that that one time that that person didn't so get I'll in use trouble. It again. So, yeah, you got to have yeah. zero tolerance to start off with and to make sure that everyone knows this is not acceptable, this is not a word that we use, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what's going on here, zero tolerance. Okay, that, I think that's a fair response. Do you have a response? I agree with her. Oh, wait, hang on before you start clapping a second, right? Uh, you got some claps, by the, by the way, okay? <laughs> From white people, by the way. We're good. All right, All right so listen. Here's the problem. What this also shows me, and now what it's showing to a lot of other folks, what this, show, what this also says is, wow, man, if he's like, I get the zero tolerance thing, I got it, right? Like, I have zero tolerance for a lot of things, like children <laughs> who go to bed hungry, you know what I mean? For bombing, for sending bombs and missiles to other countries where we know people are using them on children and innocent people, and we do it anyway because we make profits from it. I have a zero tolerance for that, but that doesn't get me anywhere, so whatever. The problem is, what it also does is tell people we shouldn't have a conversation because it's like, damn, if I, okay, I can't say it like that. Well, what other words, what else can I, what else am I going to say that I'm going to get shit? And then what it says to people men, straight people, you know, straight people dropping the F-bomb, whatever it is, right? What it says is, just be quiet. Don't say anything. Because this is too dangerous. And then we don't have real honest, and we don't have any conversations. And then, like, okay. This is a problem. And that's not what we want, right? Because we're not going to address the issues if we don't have conversations. I agree with that, but for, like, different reasons. I think people are either pushed to, like, be quiet and not say anything, or people don't have conversations, so they don't understand why certain communities think it's, like, unacceptable for, like, other groups to use it. So, like, if you try to tell someone you can't use that word, they're just going to get angry and just kind of block you out and block your explanation out and continue to you know, push the fact that they want to use it and they should use it because it's just a word. And then the people who stay quiet don't understand really why they're staying quiet, but they just don't want to step into that territory. So I think both, like, circumstances are equally bad and it's all kind okay. of, like, produced because okay. people don't for, talk about it. For me, I found, I mean, I have an abundance of white friends. I grew up in a suburban area of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and I know that they, if they have a question, like there's me and there's three other girls that grew up in our friend group that they come and ask before they would go out and say anything. So I think you're right on the silence part of it. But they do, that. there are some conversations being held with people that they're comfortable with. Okay, yeah, but okay. Definitely not on a national level. Like, people yeah, don't want to absolutely. touch yeah. that. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. Yeah. No, listen, wait, hang, hang, hang on one second. Let me go to the next one. Let me, let me just go to the next one. Let me keep going here. Do you, let me keep, can I just go to the next one? Let me go to the next one. We'll come back to it, okay? Can you, can y'all just stay here? Yeah. Here we good? Okay, because I got the next one. Uh, so, Candace Owens, right? So, she's a Trump supporter. I'm um, going to do some stuff with Kanye again. Kanye, why is he always coming into this? He's a Trump supporter, right? So Candace Owens. So Hitler was okay until he tried to go global. Do you know about this? Bruhaha, this is like a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago. Do you know who Candace Owens is? Yeah, I just didn't know. I just didn't know. All right, okay, I got you. All right, so here it is. Uh, while completely ignoring Hitler's genocide against his own people, the pro-Trump pundit, said the real issue with the Nazi dictator was that he wanted to globalize. Whoa. I'm going to ignore the genocide, which is valuable in here, that you all saw, right? We're going to ignore that. The real issue, pretend I'm Candace Owens, 
The real issue with Nazi Germany is that, you know, Hitler was fine when he was doing his own thing, but then he wanted to globalize, and that's really the problem with Hitler. So it's like, you know, that's his problem. And I say nothing about the genocide, and I say nothing, but we come up with a headline like this. What's that headline mean, basically? That she's saying that what Hitler was doing was okay. It was okay. Yeah, pretty clear, right? It's pretty clear. So let's talk about what she actually said. Because once again, this is, because she's a, she's a Trump supporter, it's really easy to put words and ideas into her. We, we can imagine, because, you know, she's narrow-minded and she's bigoted and it doesn't matter if she's black. I'm not saying this is just what we imagine, right? Like, she's self-hating, she's black-hating, she's whatever-hating, she's just, like, ignorant, she's stupid, she's whatever, because she's supporting Trump, and obviously she's stupid, because anyone who supports Trump is stupid. That's sarcasm. Got that? Whew. Trump supporters. Okay, so here's the deal. She's at a, she's at a, a gathering, and she's going to talk about nationalism. And her take is that there's all this stuff, anti-nationalist stuff. Like anybody who talks about nationalism is immediately viewed as a fascist, extreme, right-winger racist. Okay, so if you say anything about building a wall, we should build a wall. It's really good in the United States to secure its borders, and we need to be careful about who's coming into the borders and so on. So therefore, we're going to build a wall. We're going to change our immigration policy. We're going to do all these things. And because we have a nationalist tendency, and she's saying, what's wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with nationalism? The pro what's wrong with nationalism, right? Because this is what it is, right? This is, it's like your country, right? Uganda has borders. Kenya has borders. Peru has borders. Canada, everybody has borders. This is the nature of things. So her take is, look, um, I'm going to give, give an impassioned defense of nationalism because this is silly. Like, these people who are just, like, equate anything about nationalism with the stream right in hating and genocide and God knows what it is, right? So she says, um, when we say nationalism, the problem is the first thing that anybody thinks about is like, it seems to me, the national socialists and like the Nazis. Because, you know, this was the nature of it. This is nationalism, right? People immediately go to the extremes. So they go to like Hitler and like, oh my God, right? And so we think that and she says, that's not the way I see it at all. And then she goes on to say these things that are really just sort of bizarre. She's actually quite smart, right? Um, and what she says, what I actually tried to get her into Skype into class at one point because I thought it would be really fun to talk to her. But she says, if Hitler, it'd be fun, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run, okay, fine. Like, so think about the way you would say that, like how I taught, say things all the time. Yeah, if Hitler, so Hitler was just like wanting to make Germany great and run things there. It's like everyone's for everybody. That's fine, right? Got it? You see, it's like that. Not like it's fine that he's also slaughtering Jews. It's like that's not even on the table. We're talking about nationalism. And then she goes on to say the problem that people have is that he wanted to go beyond Germany. He actually wanted to take over the world. And that's not nationalism. And then I have a real problem with that. That's what she said. And what she said then turns into this by the liberal narrative in the liberal media. And then splashed all over that liberal media is Candace Owens saying Hitler was okay until he tried to change the world. And if you accept that liberal narrative, and if you accept at some level, even deep down, that, well, of course, that's how Trump people think. Like, come on, man. Does this article go into detail about this conversation? No, I went, to the, I went to the transcript. I was going to say, did you read it? it? And this it doesn't is the say. Okay, yeah. So you're saying that that's clickbait, is what you're saying, What's right? That? That the title is clickbait. The, it's clickbait. clickbait. Like, it's yeah. total clickbait. And then it's the rest of the clickbait. article, and then the rest of the article goes into detail about it what the actual conversation is. It goes into detail what she said, but what happens is what she said is you got to be like, 
Wait, hang on. Because clickbait happens on both sides. Dude, clickbait happens on both sides. But right now, we're not talking about conservatives. We're talking about liberals. And the critique is the liberal narrative and the liberal media. That's the critique I'm making. And a lot of liberals forget that because the hate, the dislike of Trump and the dislike of conservatives, they liberals have this idea that they're all right and we got it. And then, of course, she's a black conservative woman and you put her right there next to Hitler, man. Oh, my God. And I just think, I personally feel some kind of way about all this stuff because like, I think about anybody could take YouTube videos of me and l- add in all the things that I leave out when I'm talking about things. Well, you didn't talk about this. So therefore, it's fine except for that. And so Sam Richards believes dot, dot, dot. And then I become like, oh my God, like Beazelbub. Beazelbub. <laughs> Dude, you know who Beazelbub is, right? <laughs> the devil. Oh. Right. Okay, so, so got it, right? So she's cool, right? She's all right. She's not a Nazi sympathizer that supports genocide of Jews. We good there? Okay. We okay? Not based off of this article. No, just kidding. No, yeah. I have no idea. No, dude. Well, she she doesn't even imagine, like, come on, man. No. Nobody supports that. I don't, I don't keep up with that. It's just amazing that that could be all over the media. And then, you know, like, oh, I had this, people are tweeting, like, you know, Chelsea Clinton tweeted out something about her being a Nazi sympathizer. And I'm like, are you serious, man? Are you serious? Okay, so now we're going to go to another one. Just, can you just stay up here, y'all? Are, it's like you've settled in now, so we're good? Yeah. Just hang out here. All right. This is even more fun, because this involves me, man. I got, I got caught in clickbait. Click bait. So we're going to talk about this guy. What actually happened? Now, I don't, I don't just like the, 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 the other guy, I don't know what actually happened, but what I want to, this is a test to all the liberals out here. All the liberals to imagine another, the narrative that he says is the narrative. And not just him, but lots of other people. But this is the narrative that he says. And by the way, just yesterday, his family filed a lawsuit against the Washington Post for defamation and all sorts of things, right? So it's actually quite timely. So what's happening here? So let me, let me, walk, let me walk you through a few things about this. And, and I'm going to, what I want you to do is, well, hang on. We'll just walk through, okay? You remember the story? Yeah, we talked about it. We, got, we talked about it in class. Okay. So, so here, first off, on the mall, so this guy, this guy is, this guy, he's on a school trip. There's about 100 kids, and they're there for a right to life rally. Some of them are wearing Trump hats. Some of them are not, but it's a right to life, which means, um, you know, it tends to be a, a, a more conservative thing, anti-abortion. Um, they're Catholic. It's a Catholic school, so the Catholic Church has come down pretty hard against abortion and so on, right? Um, and so immediately we start developing an, a, a narrative for who they are and what they are and what they believe in, right? These young kids, and they're not all white, but most of them are. Um, and they are going to leave at, say, like 5.30. And the school says, hey, go to the, to the memorial and we'll meet you there on the steps. It, meet, everybody meet up there at 4.30 after a day of sightseeing. And then we're going to go. And we'll, we'll see you there. So they get there around 4.30. And these guys are there. Not them. The, the, the black Israelite dudes. There are only like six or seven of them. But this is just, this is from an earlier uh, a protest that they were having. So these black Israelite dudes. And the black Israelites are like this. It's this movement that kind of started, I think, in the, the, like the 18th century. And it's, it's, just like, it's a really complex and convoluted. And it's complex. I shouldn't say convoluted. It's very complex. The idea that the lost tribe, one of the lost tribes of Israel is actually, you know, ended up in Africa. And they're, they're black people. And like, so you got Jews here and Jews here and Jews here. And this one of the lost tribes. And so here they are. And so they are really bringing that tribe back. And see, so there's a lot of beliefs that are really interesting. And I'm not really sure where they come from. But Lots of religious people can get a really thick book, whether it's the Quran or the Bible or the Torah or the Bhagavad Gita or whatever, and you can pull some, it's, if it's thick enough, you can pull some really interesting beliefs out of that book. Like, oh my God, where'd you get that from? Okay, are we good? Are we cool? Got it? All right, man. So these guys are there and they're doing their protests and they're shouting some things and the kids start to gather. And these guys start shouting things at the kids. 
And they're shouting all, all sorts of stuff, okay? And hang on. One thing, they, and this is, this is recorded, it's documented, whatever, but this is, the, so this guy, Nick Sandman, that's this kid right here, so he makes a statement, and he's a yeah, man, and they, they're calling them racist, these guys, again, only about six or seven of them, so right, calling them white crackers, bigots, can I drop the F-bomb? Did someone give me permission? Jeff, do I have permission to drop the F-bomb? All right, the F-bomb. What's that? All right, you don't have permission. Okay, they're calling them all sorts of things, like incest kids. Like, hey, you kids, you're all incest kids. I don't know what the hell that means, right? But incest kids. So these guys are yelling at the kids. The kids, hey, Jeff, I'm going to need you out here in a second. Um, so... Then what happens is this guy, Nathan Phillips, this is him out protesting the, the pipeline out of North Dakota. So he's there with some other folks, and they're doing a protest. And now he's watching the kids all come together because they're being, the, the, you know, the black Israelite dudes are hurling epitaphs at them in all sorts of ways. So we're going to watch this video, and we can just keep, we'll just keep the sound off. It's easier. You guys can read you can read the, uh, the um, subtitles, but we're going to go to 50. So, so this is Nathan, and he's saying, yeah, they sort of look like the Westboro Baptist Church guys. So they, these are the guys right here, the black Israelites. And he's saying that it's like the Westboro Baptist Church. Remember, those are the guys that God hates F's, dudes. And so, so then the students start coming together. So they're, like, calling this woman some things and blue-eyed demon, right? So, they're, so re it's really picking up. So the kids all start coming together, and they're like, hey, Billy, hey, Billy, come over here, Billy. So, <laughs> so the kids say, say, listen, man, we're going to respond to this. What we're going to do is they're high school kids. These are 14, 15, 16 years old. We're going to start doing our chants. So it's escalating, right? So the whole thing, and he's saying, like, yep, it's going on, it's escalates, escalates. Why don't the kids go to the well, the kids are stuck there waiting for it. The folks, there were no buses. They were waiting for everybody to come. So the kids start doing their school chants, right? And the one kid's leading the chants because that's what you do at football games. Hang on, can you pause? Oh, wait, hang on. Hit pause. So that's awesome. Is that awesome? Like, for example, how many of you at football games at Penn State take your shirt, paint yourselves, and who's take, who, has anyone in here prone to taking your shirts off on cold days and painting your bodies at football games? Dude, one guy at the top. Anybody else? So that shouldn't be odd to you, right? So this kid, he's the leader of the cheers. These are standard school cheers that they're doing. And the kids who are now being called, they're in Washington, they're being called all these names by these dudes. They have no idea what's going on. They circle the wagons. They're like, we're going to do these cheers. And we're going to do all of our stuff that we do. And so their, whoever their chaperone was say, yeah, go ahead, do that. That's really awesome, right? Yo, in, instead of just like during football games, people take their shirts off and paint or whatever, it's almost like if a kid from here took out a cowbell and started hitting it. Like, that's pretty much what they were doing. Yeah, like if they had, the, like the, at the Penn State games, people playing the cowbells. All right, go ahead. So, so, they're, so the kids are doing their thing, right? Now... The kids are holding their place. Now, here's this guy. So Nathan and his group, they start coming over, and then they're gathered. They're going to walk into the crowd of the kids. See, the kids are doing their own thing. They're doing cheers, right? It's all good. And he's coming over to reduce the tension. Okay? And he's saying, okay, I'm just going to keep going. And then ultimately he says, I'm going to keep moving right up the steps. So look at the kids. They're all doing cheers. Got it? So you get that. You get the, what that is. There's nothing. Any of us could be in that group. Doesn't matter. They're all doing their high school cheers. They're having a good step. Having a good time. 
So he's going to go right up to the top, he's saying, okay? He's going to finish his prayer up there. So this guy, okay, so now he just walks right into this dude. Now stop, right? For, okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, keep going, actually. Okay, so here, stop. You can, you can kill it. Okay, so you ready? So here's what the young man says. So he says, look, I come, this is a Catholic school. We're brought up to be Catholics. We come from Catholic families. We follow the teachings of the Bible. I have nothing against Native Americans. I have nothing against the black people that were yelling the epithets that up. That was kind of fucked up. I have nothing at all. And so, stand up, bro. So, so you're banging a drum, and you just start slowly, just pretend you're banging a drum, and you come toward me, and I'm like, and I'm the kid, and you stop right here, and here I am. How like, how, look, here's another narrative, you ready? So even I, when we talked about this several weeks ago, I looked at, here, hang on. Looked at his face. What do you see in his face? Here's what he says was in his face. Here's what he says you're looking at. So you're banging the drums. Like, oh, fuck. Oh, this is awesome, man. Like, he's this Native American guy. I'm in Washington. He's banging his drum, bringing all this energy to this place. And, and I'm like, oh, oh, cool. Like, oh, whoa. Yeah. And then you can do click. that, but after a while, you got to move. He's trying to go to the top. Yeah, but I don't know that. He came and he stopped right here. So he's saying, Nathan later says, yeah, I couldn't go any further. And I'm just like, I'm not blocking. I'm just like, whoa, he came at me because they locked eyes and they come to, we locked eyes and we come together. And then here he is. So here's my question. Is it because he has the Trump... You can sit down, bro. Thanks. Is it because how much of our willingness, including my own, originally, even though I said, like, I don't know what the story is, but if he was my kid, I'd feel some kind of way about him having, showing a certain kind of disrespect to elders. But from his perspective, and then I got back into... I went into... I stood in his shoes as a 15-year-old, as me today... If Nathan Phillips had come at me like that, I'd have been standing there in the same way with that same shit-eating grin on my face going like, whoa, this is awesome, man. Like one of those, bro, Simon, like a stoned face, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just like, whoa. Like, is it possible that one of the reasons that the entire country turned on this kid so easily and so quickly. Is it possible or how possible is it or how much of the reason is because he's wearing a Trump hat? That is probably the entire reason, but I agree he's a child and he, the country probably shouldn't have turned on him like that, but he's still a child wearing a political statement when he can't even vote, so. If he was wearing a Patagonia hat, I still would have thought he was disrespectful for not moving out of the way. Dude, you don't know he's out of the way, though. It's according to everybody else who's there, including other people who were with this Nathan Phillips, he, he wasn't blocking the way. It's like, here, you, you move. Go stand here. Let me stand over here. You do the drum thing. You stand, just start walking toward me. You're going, you're going this way. Go slowly, slowly. You're being, go really slowly. Yeah, exactly. Now, you're coming right at me. Yeah. And I think, That's what do I weird. think? No, there's Dude, no way. No, what I think is like, whoa, you're coming right at me. We're, our eyes are locked right here. I don't you're know. coming at me. I don't know. No, because they both said their eyes are locked. So you're coming at me. And I'm like, whoa, this guy's playing his drum for weird. me. Like, I want to move right now. I'd feel no, uncomfortable yeah, I and I would just I'd move. Say. I would just move. Uh, after I think a while. I would. Like, I, I just, I think cues. I personally would move. Social cues. Like, I don't know, man. All I'm saying is, dudes, all I'm saying is, I... I know you're trying to get Listen, us no, no, to think no, no. in a I, different yo, perspective, which kid. is fair. He's a yo, kid, and he probably I, was just yo, being Sam, stupid, but... He's I also think with you saying locking eyes with, you know, a native person who's playing on drums and praying or whatever, you understand what that means. 
This kid probably didn't. So when he was standing up there, he may have been trying to block him. He may have just been looking at him. The thing is that you're trying to get at that I think people in here might understand is the media went way too far in hating on him. Well, here's the deal. When you say blocking, understand that there's no blocking. He's not the only kid here. It's like, it's this whole, look, right here. It's like, you, this dude right here is Nick Sandman. And the rest of you are Nick's group. So if you're saying, like, Nick should get out of the way, why? There's nowhere for, for Phillips to go. He's, like, right here. Where is he going to go? Here? He's going to go here? He's going to go here? He, no, you can't get out of the way. It's just part of it. It's this big crowd of people. So it's not about him being in the way. It's about us. See, I think it's about the narrative of seeing the Trump hat and then just immediately saying, like, the kid is an arrogant little prick. Here, look, you ready? Even after all this came out, here are still the results. Fuck this little liar and the pieces of shit who defend him while wearing their Christianity on their sleeves. Seriously? And then... They're all but decked out in their MAGA gear. They're invincible and entitled and superior. What, why, why can't you believe him? Why can't you believe Nick Sandman? Because he has a Trump hat on? Like, why don't you just believe him? Like, if he was, what, would we believe, what if he was a 15-year-old black kid and he said, hey, man, I just came home and the cops just pulled me out of the car and beat me up. How many of us liberals would be like, oh yeah, the cops, because they're racist, and of course we're going to believe the 15-year-old black kid. Well, this kid's saying, I have no disrespect for him at all. We locked eyes, and I was like, this is an awesome moment in my life, and I'm going to stay connected in this moment. And so, like, that's, why is it so hard to accept? But it would be okay, you know, like, I'm going to believe, like, if he got beat up by the police and he was black or brown or whatever. Or if it was a, if, what if it was a 15-year-old girl who said that, oh yeah, I was walking through the mall and this thing happened and I, and I felt some guy grab me on the rear end and I turned around and it was like, would we believe her? Would we just, would we say like, no, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Really? Did, okay. Yeah. I mean, what would we say? You know what I mean? Like, what, well, what are your motivations? And what are you this? And what are you that? Like, who are we willing to believe? And why is it hard to believe for like, look at this. I just pulled these off. I could, there were hundreds upon hundreds of them that I could get. All right, Simon, you're on, my friend. Fast, though, fast. All right, so I agree with what you're saying and that it's just a distortion of the... Dude, hang on, hang on. Though I'm not saying this is the truth. My question is, why is it so hard to... Why is it so easy to take the liberal narrative and, and jump on it? Say it really fast, because I want to go to that guy at the top. Yeah, just got it. All right, so I get, with, I get with what you're saying and that this is just a distortion of the media, but first of all, I don't think it's a responsibility of the individuals to doubt the media in every way. While we should look at everything critically, the media should be under, held under more scrutiny to project what is actually happening. Yeah. And then second of all, with your points of, oh, are we going to believe this black guy? Are we going to believe this girl? A lot of the times we don't. A lot of times the people... Yeah, you're right, we don't. A lot of times the people aren't even held responsible for it. No, that. dude, hang on. But a lot of times... People who are liberal or take the more liberal narrative or take the more racism is a real thing and it's happening all the time narrative are going to be very quick to believe this person but not believe the 15-year-old wearing the Trump hat. Yeah, but that's And everyone. that's my point. No, but if you're going to believe one, you got to believe the other. And so those of you who immediately believe the 15-year-old kid wearing the Trump hat, you also got to believe the 15-year-old kid who says the police pulled him off his bicycle and beat him up. You got to believe him too. Because if you're going to believe one, you got to believe the other. Yeah, bro. So I was just going to say, like, in that video, whenever he was, uh, Nathan Phillips, right? Yeah. All right. When he was walking up, he said, like, we were completely surrounded. We have nowhere else to go. There was a huge gap in those stairs before they went over to the kids that they could have, like, the Indians could have walked, Native Americans could have walked up and then gotten to the top of the stairs without going anywhere near those kids. So why did he have to go straight to those kids? Oh, no, he, w he went to them for a very cool reason, by the way. And his reason was, look, I'm going to take the spirit of the drum because the drum is a spirit and an energy. And I'm, and I'm afraid that what's actually happening with these kids doing all of these like uh, cheers and stuff, this is getting out of hand because the more they did cheers, because he didn't know what, that they were high school cheers, the more they're doing that, the more the black Israelites are like up in the game there. And so Nathan Phillips is saying, I got to get in between all of these folks and I need to chill this out. So I'm going to go right toward those kids. So he did that on purpose, which was cool, you know. Okay, so then why is he getting so offended whenever someone's getting in his way? 
like, wasn't. like the, the, he could, he could, well, he wasn't, yeah. so he wasn't, okay. he wasn't particularly offended. Like he wasn't later. Like he gave a couple different versions of the story. Phillips did because Many he versions. was trying to figure it also out, like what really happened and so on. And he's never really, yeah. So he's also trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Pam. Yeah. But that's a good, cool. Thanks for asking that, dude. Is it on? Oh, I find it hard to understand that he's trying to connect with Nathan Phillips when he's at a pro-life rally as a man because he doesn't understand what it's like to go through pregnancy or abortion. Dude, hang on a second. Hang on a second. So wait, so you're saying men can't be pro-life? I'm not saying, I just don't think they completely understand what it's like to be well, a woman. Well, we don't have to understand, but like I've never been, here, let me ask you this though. Let me just say this. I've never been... I've never been, be, let's say, uh, sexually molested, right? So let me just go right there. I've never been sexually abused. I can't really understand what it is, but I could be at a rally. I could be with someone and I could try to bond. Like, hey, man, I can't go there, but I can, like, be there. It's like, you know, be careful when you go to that place. It's like, what well, he can, there are lots of things that he can be connect with. You know what I mean? Sexual, you know, just violence against women. It's like, he's not a woman, but he could connect to that. You know what I mean? You just got to be careful on that. Does that make sense? Are you there? Are you? Yeah. Are there any conservatives in here that have something that you want to say about today's, about the liberal? Damn, dog. Yeah, all right, go I ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm not a conservative by any means, but... I think something that's kind not being overlooked, but the fact that you're saying, like, it's just because he has a Trump hat on, but that's a very large factor in the fact that he, when he put that hat on, he chose to represent a campaign that was built on hate, that was built on discriminating against people of color, and although he's young and he's a kid, like, he chose to put that on, so he can say all he wants, like, oh, I don't have anything against people of color, I don't have anything against blah, 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 but his hat is saying complete opposite, and although those things might not represent his ideal values, he still is saying, okay, well, Trump saying this okay, isn't a deal breaker. You know, you just walked into quicksand, right? So what if he had an Obama hat? What if he had a Hillary Clinton hat? That, and that would, he would be representing that too, and like it would still be wrong, but... Yeah, but what would it mean to somebody like you if he had a Hillary hat? She's saying that the media portrayed him that way because of the Trump hat. Same thing that you're saying. And he chose to wear that. He chose to let that represent him, a movement that has not been supportive yeah, but, of people but, of color or, pe- or narrative. No, I got you. Yeah. But, but my issue is yeah. that liberals are very quick to just accept the narrative, right? And liberals who know nothing. If he wore a Hillary Clinton hat on... Yeah. I know what Hillary stood for, if and he, I know what Barack Obama stood for. If, honestly, if he was wearing a different hat, then it wouldn't be a story at all. It would be a non-story. There wouldn't be this twisting. Exactly. And it probably, yes. Okay, like, I'm making your point. Yeah, you are. Like, Thanks, dog. <laughs> like, you're welcome, but, <laughs> but, but the fact right. of the matter is that he wore that hat. Yeah, he did, but whatever. That shouldn't matter at all. Like, come on, man. Wait, can I get a couple? Can I get some conservative? To, can conservatives give me a... When's the last time you heard someone talk about the liberal media like this? Like, come on, man, can I get a shout out? Oh, is it? Is Damn, it dog. What is oh, yeah, it? go ahead, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly conservative. I'm more uh, centrist, but um, I think I just want to point out that I don't know. He's, he's a fucking high schooler. He's like 14, 15. Like, you've done something stupid in your life. I, but I don't even think and, that's and, stupid. And, and, and he and he doesn't know better. Like. So, so let's say, let's say you wore some hat to a rally that your school is going, right? Let's some say hat? You... No, but dude, it's all right. It's so, a Trump hat, like, dude. Like, like, even, yo, man. Even, yo, even about yo, that. listen. Hang on. Oh, yo, listen. My friends, do you all, all those who, are, who would have voted for Hillary Clinton, do you have any idea what Hillary Clinton stood for? Or do you want to just live in your own ignorance? Because if you had any idea what Hillary Clinton stood for, it's like, come on, man. Go ahead. All right, I just want to respond to this girl's comment about what the hat stands for. It's kind of the whole point of the lesson that you're just painting it with your brush of what you think that movement is, but that's yeah. not what that means to him. Like, yeah. he doesn't necessarily support Trump because he thinks he's racist. He might support other so- things. Like- he might not even support Trump. <laughs> Do you overlook everything? Do you overlook everything that Trump has said? Even if 
Trump stands for multiple things, you then you just wait. get to overlook the oh, racist, wait, no, sexist, hang on. Hang on, everything else. You. That's just your viewpoint of the situation. You get to look at no. Yo, 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 Those things on. are still factors. Yo, yo, I feel you, like we're in an episode of Maury. Can I see that? <laughs> yo, do y'all, hang on. <laughs> do y'all understand? Do, dude, hang on. Wait, where are we at? Right in this camera. Do y'all do y'all understand what this stands for? You you get this, y'all? You ready? You want to know what this stands for? What do you think it stands for? It's pedophile state. You got it? So like you think, no, this stands for Penn State, it stands for Thon, it's in, no, 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 no. There are people all over the world. This hat stands for pedophile state. And you are all a bunch of pedophile supporters. Whose was it? Dude, for having it. Dude, that um, hat, the Trump hat, stands for a certain thing. For a, a lot of people, for millions upon millions of people in the world, your Penn State gear stands for pedophile state, and you are supporters of pedophilia. And so, choose it. Oh, no, that's not what we support. Oh, well, me wearing a Trump hat, I don't support all the negative things that you ascribe to Trump. I just support the couple of cool things that I really like about Trump. And so I just support Thon, and I support Penn State football, and I heard this, well, no, not football, because that's associated with... You see what I mean, right? <laughs> you be careful. If you're going to step in the quicksand, you're going to step in it lots of places, bro. Yo, Sam, I got one up here. Sam, all right, go ahead. Back here. So I just want to say real quick, um, that's a snapshot in time, no matter what the hat is. Everyone I heard was expecting, like some other people were expecting, why didn't Nathan just go or avoid the group? There's a narrative that continues for multiple hundreds, hundreds in your colonization. It's expecting, like the white man is the wall, it's expecting someone to walk around. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes, and I, there's so much more than just that. It's so much more than just a hat. It's this white man standing in the way of that. And so yeah. at the end of the day, if it was another hat, there's still disrespect there. And I think that this is a snapshot in time. And no matter what the other factors that may have been, this is the thing that's going to get remembered. Okay, all right. I, you can, and you, we can buy, we can go there. All right, bro, last comment, my friend. Uh, I have a couple things to say. Uh, Make them fast, though. So you got... Yeah, so we, we had a conversation before about the wall and how it was because Trump's racist, this and that. Uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, voted for Hillary or Obama. In 2005, the Secured Fences Act, Hillary, Obama, and Chuck Schumer all voted in favor of a wall for immigration defense and immigration reform. So why is it now that Donald Trump, who is widely considered racist, which I personally don't believe, is now a racist thing that he wants a wall? If we want in 2013, more walls, then they can... In 2013, in 2013, if outside of the White walls, House, can... Obama wait, got up wait, wait, wait. and said, oh, we need immigration question. reform. Hang on, hang I have a counter question. Hold on, wrong? hold on. Wait, wait I really do have wait, a counter hang on, question. Hang on. Hang on. No, and this is not wait. attacking you, because no, maybe on, sometimes on. people miss it. I know for me personally, the fact that he said all black people or, or, or the comment that he made that we all Hispanics are, 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 are rapists and druggies or the fact that black people had nothing to lose by voting for him because they were already okay. in the worst state of their life. Those are racist statements. Okay, hang on, hang on, though. Hang on, my friend. Hang on. Listen, you got to understand, though, if I, if I did a class and I did nothing more than talk about all the things that Hillary Clinton stood for and Barack Obama stood for and what they did, you'd be like, oh, it's no, not the same. I was oh, specifically addressing right. the fact that he said right, that he didn't you. think Trump right, was listen, racist. All right, listen, y'all. Here's the deal. Yo, hang on. Hang on. I got 30 seconds. I'm going to have 30 seconds and I'm going to end it right here. You ready? You ready? Listen up. Listen up. Hang on. Hey, wait. First off, can we get a round of applause for these two? <laughs> you killed it, dog. You killed it. Hey, uh, look, here's what's up. Don't forget, um, I'm, so liberals, liberals, just take these three examples and just start looking around at all the other places. We see this happening in our narrative. It's a common narrative.